Hey friends, I am Jenny with Gardening with Creekside and today I'm going to share with you some tips on designing a new flower bed that you may be installing at your house. So we have installed this new flower bed within the last year and again I just want to share some tips on how we planned it and how we planted it. We installed a new patio in the back of our house. So we have this transition bed that I absolutely love from our driveway to the back patio. And when I was designing this bed, I really wanted to focus on doing four seasons of interest and that layered look. So you predominantly see this flower bed from this sidewalk, this little pathway. So the bed is really intended to be viewed from this point because I start low and I'll work my way up as we go through um, the back of the flower bed. It is chocked full of shrubs and perennials. So I'm just gonna go through a little bit here and kind of give you some ideas on what you might want to think of when you're planning a new flower bed. Again, four seasons of interest. Here in the early spring, I've had a beautiful display of my garden flocks. This is some of the Ruby Riot garden flocks that is down here and I have actually intermingled the new was well, not new it is the perennial of the year it is paint the town magenta dianthus so it is in here also as the garden flocks is beginning to fade away from for the season I have my cat's pajamas that is absolutely in glorious display right now and then right behind it is going to be these scentlandias these scentlandia shrubs are a wonderful sun loving condition um, shrub they are absolutely covered in buds right now and pretty soon they're going to be in full bloom so that extends me into late spring then coming up right behind that i have got banana cream two shasta daisies the amazing daisies some of my absolute favorite they are in here so they will be coming right up behind as is the blueberry sunday baptisia so again we're looking at going from low and working our way up Eventually, not right now, we will have the Gatsby Gal Hydrangea that is gonna be the center point of this flower bed. I do call this the Gatsby Gal bed because she is the center point and will be nice and huge and glorious in just a few years. We've got perennial grasses in here. And then of course, you can't have too many hydrangeas in a flower bed. So on the back of the border, we have the lime light primes that are gonna be more narrow and upright that will give me a bit of a privacy screen because you can't see this, but behind us we have our, um, what we call the tractor shed, which sometimes can be a little less than desirable to look at. So anything that I can do to kind of help block that view is also a very nice bonus point. So we have, um, those great shrubs, we've got serendipity allium in here that will give us lots of attractors for our pollinators. We've got um, the Apache rose perennial grass that are nice and huge, waking up from their winter slumber quite nicely. You'll also notice that I do have two containers within this flower bed. One, it has annuals. I still have some pansies and violas left over from the winter. They're staying nice and pretty, so I'm gonna keep those for now. Once it gets warm enough and I have to take those out, I'll pop something else in there that loves the heat of our summer. Right here, I have a um, container filled with the Sweet Romance Lavender. We struggle here in North Carolina, zone 7B, with our heavy clay soil with our lavender because it just gets to be um, too um, moisture retention for the lavender. So I have put it in a container to try to aid in the aeration of the soil so it drains faster. So far it is doing great. I've got tons of new growth on it. I even have a couple of flower buds. So we've got the low to the high. We even popped in some annuals in there. We've got a beautiful selection uh, grouping of the Senorita um, Blanca Cleome that is directly behind Gatsby Gal because you can always have a great mix of your shrubs, your perennials, and your annuals. So when you're planning your flower bed, think of your sun conditions. This flower bed gets full sun from the moment it rises in the morning until it sets late um, in the day. We're actually filming this after supper one night, and so this is the first time that it is in, quote, shade. So this is very sun loving. It is on irrigation. We have drip irrigation through here um, just to kind of aid in 
the water because this is one of the hottest spots in our yard. And because we are North Carolina Zone 7B, um, our summers are intensely hot and humid. All of these plants will just perform wonderfully, whether it is from the creeping phlox, early spring, to my Scentlandia, to my Shasta daisies, my Serendipity. I also have a whole ribbon back here. You wouldn't notice it right now, but it is the luminary opalescence phlox that will give me nice height, gorgeous light pale pink um, flowers that will bloom for a huge amount of time in the summer that also has a delicious sweet fragrance to it. And then of course I cannot wait for these limelight primes to be in full bloom. It is going to be glorious and as the Cleome grows it'll get nice and tall and full and fill in back there behind the Gatsby Gal. So think of what are your sun conditions? What are your goals? Do you want four seasons of interest? Are you trying to attract pollinators? What is the main goal for your flower bed? All of those things are some good tips to keep in mind when you're planning your bed. And then my last tip for you is don't think you have to do it all at one time. We have added to this bed in the last year major installations, I would say at least three times. One was for the shrubs. Came back almost a year later and I did my perennials. Then later this spring, or earlier this spring rather, I installed some, a very few um, little smatterings of annuals. So give yourself grace. It's okay. You don't have to get it perfect the first time. Enjoy the process. That is what gardening is all about. But as always, I hope that you have enjoyed this video, found something interesting, found something helpful. And as always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.